We can turn the Bible there and uh, thank you all for the meeting and for all the help that goes into all this. And, yeah. and uh, we really do appreciate where we're at. It's been a blessing. The kids have really been enjoying it. And, uh, yeah. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to go over there. And the love's opened the door for us to spend, uh, you know, spend our time there. It's a really nice place up there. Well, thank you for all that. Amen. And I appreciate all the preaching and the work that's Amen. gone into all that to encourage the saints. Amen. Yeah. To keep going. It seems like the prevailing thought just, just continues to be not to quit, not to throw in the towel, just keep going. And, and uh, after Brother Aaron preached last night, I thought, man, Lord, you know, you know when the Lord just kind of puts something together because messages just seem to fall in line. You yeah. know? And I, I just praise God for that. I see God work in, uh, in all those areas. And uh, so I kind of, you know, uh, I'm not going to mention, but, so, you know, sometimes people ask us if we have some needs. And uh, we have a lot of needs. I mean, we have a lot of, I don't know if you call a need, a want, a want, a need, or whatever, you know. We have a lot of things we're doing in the ministry, and uh, you know, I told my wife probably a month ago or something. I said I could utilize a hundred thousand dollars tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, most people that are that have some kind of a ministry could could use whatever the Lord will provide. Right. You know, and um, <clears throat> and so, but we do have needs, and we have several different aspects of ministry that we could invest in. So uh, just continue to pray for us on that. Is is that God would give us wisdom. To, to, to just do it where he wants us, you know, put things where he wants us to put it. And, and uh, we, we really need that. So pray, pray for wisdom that God would, uh, as the Lord provides, that God would give us the wisdom and, and, and ability to, uh, to know where, where to put things. And uh, we are uh, thankful to be serving him. It's, it's been a blessing. We've had, we've, uh, the, the smiles, I mean, we're doing millions and millions of smileys between the fairs and festivals and the preachers and the, and the churches and the missionaries that, that order those and the tracks. So just continue to pray for us on that. Uh, as some have said already, we, uh, <clears throat> we don't see the fruit sometimes of our labor, but I do get to see once in a while. Yeah. You know, not too long ago I had a missionary. I uh, read, read his letter and he said he had been handing out the Spanish smiles in uh, the Canary Islands in a couple different times. And uh, he, 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 he was watching a guy read through one and went over there and, and talked to him, was able to lead him to the Lord. Another guy came to his church after reading one of the Spanish miles and said he read this and he did what it said and he got into church there. And so there are there is some fruit that you get to hear yes. about, but we don't always hear about our fruit. But the reality of it is, is I was talking to Brother uh, Cliff, Clifford last night that we don't do what we do because of fruit. Right. We do what we do because of obedience. Amen. Right. Amen. And so uh, we're going to go to John chapter uh, John chapter five, or John John chapter. Let's see here. Am I, I'm in the wrong. John chapter six. I'm sorry. John chapter six, verses. Uh, I'm going to just read verses sixty six through sixty nine. Then I'm going to say a word of prayer. It says, "From that time, many of his disciples went back." and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, We also go away. Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And I'm going to focus on two things there. Verse 66, uh, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And then Jesus asked this question, will ye also go away? Yeah. Dear Lord, I thank you for your goodness to us. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to preach your word. Lord, please help me to communicate truth properly this, this morning. Thank you for all the preachers and the good messages we've heard and the challenge, challenges to our Christian life. Lord, just help us to be all we can be for you, Lord. And uh, we'll thank you and praise you for what you'll do. And Lord, we know that you're God and you're God alone. <clears throat> but God, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to do all that you have us to do. Yes. Lord, to have the wisdom and 
Lord, the ability, Lord, that we would uh, that to know your will, to, to be uh, uh, to be persuaded of all those things that we're supposed to do in our lives as Christians and be strong in your grace. Lord, help us this morning. Lord, give us the strength we need to go on and Lord, to wake up tomorrow morning after the tent meeting and uh, to decide to serve Jesus and decide to follow Jesus. And we'll thank you for all that you do. Lord, thank you for coming to this earth and uh, Lord, teaching us and uh, Lord, dying on the cross and shedding your blood and, and raising again. Lord, to show us that you have power over death. Lord, I pray that you help us as Christians to live like you're alive and well. And uh, we will thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I, he can title the message uh, a couple different things. Uh, will ye also go away? But my points are four things that Peter knew. And uh, those are going to be my points this morning. He said, the Lord said from uh, in verse 66, Will ye also go away? And the Bible says many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him in verse 66. Whatever happens in life does not change who Jesus is right. and what he means to you and I. It's, a, it's tragic when people decide they are not going to walk with Jesus anymore. When you turn your back on the only one who can truly help you in life, your only other option is to turn to the world for answers. So when you decide that you're going to turn your back on God, like a lot of these disciples did, they went away. They yeah. left Him. Why? Because things were getting hard. Yeah. Because things were getting intense. And the Lord looked and said, Will ye also go away? You know, when Peter had his hiccups, he denied the Lord. The Bible, he, you know, he kind of got a little proud about his position and what he would do. And he said, Lord, I'll never forsake you. <laughs> and the Lord showed him who he was. Look, yeah. I'm going to show you, Peter, that you're just flesh and blood. Right. You're just flesh and blood. And before the cock crow thrice, thou shalt deny me. Or before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Yeah. Peter denied the Lord. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we think we're stronger than we are. But I want you to notice what Peter said. Then Simon Peter, in verse 68, answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of life. Peter had some things right. Peter knew where God's place in his life was. Yes. He knew that he had the words of life. There's no other place to turn. We talked about throwing in the towels. And I like the fact that uh, Brother uh, Aaron brought up, it's not just one towel, it's not just one fight, but there's several fights in life. Yeah. And there's several, there are areas sometimes we want to throw in the towel, we want to give up, we want to walk away from the Lord on that thing. Or we want to walk away from the Lord on that thing. And I have friends in my life that taught me, I got saved and uh, uh, when I got saved I was excited about the Lord. And I, I, I was willing to do anything I had to do for the Lord. Cut my hair, put, put on a suit, do whatever it was because I was excited about serving the Lord. Yeah. And then later on, I see those same people start taking those same things they taught me and just throwing them by the wayside. Yeah. Oh, that's not really that important. We put too much emphasis on that. And we put too much emphasis on that. And we put too much emphasis on that and that and that and that and that. I got news for you. God has an opinion on almost everything in life. Yeah, man, man. I was taught to find out the will of God in my life and do it. Right. <laughs> Right? So I'm trying to figure out in my life as a young Christian, what what do I need to do here? What do I need to do here? What's God's will here? What's God you know why we have look, I'm not preaching to, to anybody to have as many children as we have. But the reason we have the children that we have is because my wife and I sought God on the subject of children. And we asked God what he would have to us to do. And this is what the answer was. Amen. And you can argue with me all you want, but we've never turned back, and I don't regret it a single bit. Amen. It's Amen. been hard at times, but it's a blessing. Right. Children are an heritage of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. The reason our country's going the way it is is because the right people aren't having enough children. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. Because if we had more Christians that were... And that's not what this message is about. My point is, is that... We need to seek God in every area of our life. That's what I was taught as a young Christian. Yeah. 
God does have an opinion about how you dress. Yes. God does have an opinion on whether he wants you to look like a woman or look like a man. Right. Look it up. Yeah. I'm not I'm not preaching something that I came up with. The reason people preach on those things is because there's stuff in the book about it. Right. And so uh, we don't we shouldn't cast aside things too lightly. Remember that. Just ask God, God, what do you want me to do with this? Now, there are some things that are opinion and preference and all those things, and I get that. But there's a lot of things that we put aside and cast aside that we, sh we should be holding to. Yeah. We should be holding to. And uh, let me just say this. Uh, this is just a, a side thought. Um, it's, I mean, it's not really because it's Memorial Day, but I was looking at the flag, and I thought of something that somebody wrote recently about... The, the, the verse that talks about rendering unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, right? And we, when we look at the flag, we think of, who do we think of when we think of Caesar in our country? We think of the president, we think of, but the reality of it is, is we are a republic. When I, when I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, you know what a republic is? It's we the people. Yeah. We are Caesar in this country. Right. And people are trying to steal this freedom. Right. That's all it is. It's highway robbery. Yeah. It's theft. Amen. The wrong people are running our country. Right. And, uh, and we need to pray about that because it's, getting, it's going to be destroyed and it's going to turn into con it's a, It already has in many aspects. Yeah. But it's going to be, it's not a monarchy. You know, we, we, don't, serve, we don't serve a king in our country. Anyhow, just food for thought. And the reason I bring that up is we've cast a lot of things aside. We don't even really understand sometimes what our country is all about right. and what it stands for and why people die. Right? Yeah. To, to save those freedoms. To, 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 to stay a republic. To stay a, a country run by the people for the people. That's why we have elected officials for every district and different branches of government so nobody gets too much power in our country. Many of us understand that. But even in our country, we're casting away things that we know better to cast away. Right. We shouldn't be just giving up our rights. <laughs> there is a constitution that we live by. Anyhow, I don't want to get political, but there, there's a reality to some of those things. Right. And there's a reality to some of these things. Yeah. And if you want God's blessing in your life, you have to seek His will in every area. But Jesus says, will ye also go away? The other twelve disciples were asked if they would go away also. Peter said, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Although we preach and read of Peter's problems, we also know that we can take comfort that Peter was fully persuaded that there was no other answer outside of Christ. We should ask ourselves the same question. Will we go away? Will we throw in the towel? What will it take for you and I to turn our back on the one, the only one who holds all the answers? The sad part is, is that our reasons are absolutely insane sometimes. Yeah. Financial troubles, relationship troubles, our feelings get hurt, we get bitter in circumstances, human responses, human answers. And none of it is God's fault. Right. It's all our fault. Right. Sin is the reason why we're in the mess we're in. It's not God's fault. Right. But God has all the answers. Right. And yet we want to turn our back and go the other way. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, will you also go away? Yeah. By that time, Peter knew enough to say, whither in the world? Where in the world are we going to go? Yeah. Look, if things get hard, there's only one place to really go. Yeah. That's to God. To get the answers. Yeah. Don't go away from them. Men have a lot of answers. Preachers have a lot of answers. Yeah. They're not all of God. Right. It's important that you and I do not leave our God. Right. We don't walk away from Him. Yet He gets the blame and the cold shoulder almost every time. Yeah. However, He has the answers and the comfort for our soul. If the Lord's taught us anything, you've been saved for any length of time, He's taught us that He can be trusted. Yes. I know the Lord can be trusted. Yes. You know, in, in five, ten years, you know, I might 
God, I'm flesh and blood, right? I might throw in the towel. But I don't ever want to be a discouragement to anybody. I don't, I, that's not what I want to do, obviously. By God's grace, I will never throw in the towel because we are an example. Uh, we're an example of believers. If I do it for any reason, it's so that people can see that I didn't quit on God. Yeah. That I didn't quit on God. But, and if I did, there's still God's, God, you know, when John, another disciple that was in the presence of the Lord, when he said, will you also go away, wrote the book of Revelation, he was weeping in the end because he could find no man, there was no man that was worthy. He's weeping and nobody could open the book. Yeah. But, what did the angel say? Weep not. Yep. For the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed yeah. to open the book. Yes. There's still always one that's never going to quit. That's worthy of all our service, all our time, all the prayers, all the concerns, all the burdens. That's why he, the, the Bible says, casting all our burdens upon the Lord, for he careth for us. And he shall sustain thee. I, I, I think I'm par uh, misquoting that particular one there. But the reality of it is, is God cares for you. Yes. He cares for you more than any. My, my God cares for my children more than I could ever think of caring for my children. Yes. So they may not have a perfect father, but they have a perfect father. Yeah. They have an eternal father yeah. that they can look to. We're going to fall short. Right? Yeah. But he never falls short. So don't turn your back on the Lord. Number one, I want to say Peter knew life was in him. Thou hast the word of life. Whither shall we go? You ever think about that? I'm sure you have. When you think about quitting, where, where in the world would I go? David thought the same thing. Psalm 139. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Psalm 139, 1 through 10. He said, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knowest my downsittings and my uprisings. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid Thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful. Do you ever get like that? Yeah. Wow, Lord. It almost gets overwhelming sometimes, doesn't it? Right. When you think about what uh, Brother Love was talking about concerning hell and the, the, the eternity of hell, that kind of gets overwhelming sometimes. It's like, oh, man, that's a heavy burden to bear. How do you get people to see that they're going to spend eternity in hell if they don't trust Jesus Christ as their Savior? Good night. Nobody wants to go to hell. I don't want my worst enemy to go to hell. Yeah. But that knowledge, and then that's what David says, Thou hast set me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high. I cannot attain to it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Yep. There's no getting away from God. Yes. You can try all you want to. You will never escape the presence of God. Yeah. So you might as well enjoy it in heaven. <laughs> because if you don't enjoy it in heaven, you're going to be in His wrath for eternity. Yeah. And that's not where I want to be. Oh. Look, fire's hot. But hell, not getting out of fire? Good night, come on. Wow. Let's just think about that for a second. Oh. I mean, like he said, there's... There's options. <laughs> There's no options after eternity. God closed the book. His long suffering's over. This isn't a joke. It's not a joke. You and I have no other place to go. We must go to Him. Let me say number two. Peter knew that he had life. He had the power of life. And he held the keys of life and death. Peter also knew that Jesus could calm the stormy waters. Amen. Many of us here that have been saved for any length of time, we know we've gone through the storm with the Lord and we've seen the time of the storm. Yeah. I'm sure Peter was there when he asked his disciples to get in the boat and pass the other side. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. 
through 27, when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and so much that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And in another gospel, I believe they say, care not that we perish. And, and, uh, and he saith unto them, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Look, they have been with him for a long time, and yet the Lord calms the storm and calms the sea, and this is what they do in verse 27. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? They hadn't figured it out yet. What manner of man is this? It's the God man. It's the one who controls everything. It's the one who came to uh, relate with your affliction. In all points tempted, like as we are. Yes. And yet, right. without sin. Right. We can't depart from the only perfect thing we have right. in this world. Peter stepped out of the boat another time and witnessed the Lord save him from the storm. God didn't let him sink. He reached out, and I think of that many times. That's what we are. We're sinking people. And if we don't know who to cry out to for help, we're in trouble. Right. But Peter still said, Lord, help. Many, many people say, well, Peter, you know, he just was too full. I, I just believe sometimes Peter wanted to see what God would do. Yeah. I mean, who in the world would step out of a boat thinking that he was, he was going to get, you know, his God was going to let him drown? Who, who would do that? Yeah. I want to walk on the water too. Peter, Peter tested God. I want to see. But then, you know, the storms come. And the winds get boisterous, and the accusations, and the hurts, and the the, the, the the things of this life, and the cares, and the pleasures, and the riches of this world, they all come crumbling in, and we begin to sink, right? Yeah. But what did Peter do? He said, help the Lord. Yes. If you don't cry out to God, he, and what did God do? He reached his hand out. And lifted him right up. Yeah. Said, Wherefore didst thou doubt? Peter, you tested me. And then you doubted me. That's what we do, isn't it? Yeah. But then we want to turn the other way and blame God for everything that takes place in our life. Yeah. None of it's his fault. I guarantee you, none of it's his fault. Right. God is not willing that any should perish, right. but that all should go to repentance. You know that God's not even willing that you... He doesn't like that we have to suffer. But we have to suffer because of sin. Yeah. The fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking, uh, walking on the sea. And when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit. And they cried out for fear, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. Right? Be of good cheer. Be of a good mindset. Be of yeah. a good spirit. Yeah. A lot of storms are going to come. A lot of things are going to happen. But be of good cheer. Yes. Amen. And Peter tested him. Answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But he saw the wind boisterous. He was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Why didn't the Lord just keep him from sinking? <laughs> because he wanted him to ask for help. Yeah, <laughs> and as soon as Peter realized he could ask God for help, God helped him and saved him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, we don't always get delivered out of everything. But remember, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what did they say to the king? They said, our God is able to deliver us, yeah. and he will deliver us, but if not, what? We're going to do the right thing. Right. We're not going to bow down. This world is going to test us if the Lord tarries. We're going to be tested. Our faith is going to be tested. My children's faith is going to be tested. Yes. If the Lord tarries a lot longer. And there's not revival in this country. Right. That's concerning to me. I'm 51. I'll be 52 Wednesday. Or whatever day the 29th is. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm... 
I'm, you know, two thirds, at least two thirds of the way through this thing, I think. But they're going to just have to face them. I hope that they learn to reach out to the God who can really help them. Ah, yeah. Yes. Don't walk away from God. You don't ever walk away from God, yeah. regardless of who's hurting you, what's happening. Yeah. If you don't like what's going on in the church, don't quit going to church. You find out where you can go to church and you get back in church. Yeah. That's not going to help you because faith cometh by hearing and yes. hearing by the Word of God. By the Word of God. Many times we have seen God calm stormy waters and yet the next time we have the same fears. Instead of learning, sometimes we learn but sometimes God's got to put us through it a few times. Okay, yeah, I got this, Lord. We've been through this before. I know you can handle it. Lord, I'm giving it to you this time. I'm giving it to you this time. And then you walk through that storm a little better. When I say three, Peter knew that two, he, he, he knew he could come the storm. Number three, he knew Jesus was still alive. Yeah. He's still alive. He knows Jesus is still alive. And he was on the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17. Verse 8, and when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Remember, Peter wanted to build three altars, and God got rid of Moses and Elijah. Yeah. And said, This is my beloved Son, yes. in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Yep. He's trying to he's trying to just weed it out. Look, you guys don't understand clearly. This is the one. He's the prophet that fulfills all prophecy. He's the one. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereas you do well to take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. He's the one, Peter. Listen to him. And as they came down, verse 9, uh, from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen. The Lord right. told him right there, till the Son of Man be risen. Yeah. You know, this they're hearing all this stuff for the first time. Risen. Peter knew Jesus was going to rise from the dead. And then after Jesus rose from the dead, Peter went to the sepulcher. Later, the risen Savior revealed himself to his disciples. In John chapter 20, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. You know, we haven't seen Jesus. But you're blessed because you believed on one who yes. has seen. I believe that's talking about those in the future who would yeah. never see him. And Peter, and he's saying, Thomas, you believe because you've seen, but blessed are those that believe and have not seen. They just believe God's word. They take him at his word. We take him at his word. That's the only hope we have. Yes. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the book. But these are written. These are written. Many things aren't written, but these are written. That ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his, through his name. Yes. That's why these are written. These are written. That's why they're written. So we can have life through his name. Not everything's been revealed, but a lot of it has. Verse 31 teaches us why these things were written. So that others can believe and have life through him. He's writing to all those who have not yet believed. People must believe on his name. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given among men, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. That's why it's one way. The Bible says it's one way. There's no other way. We that have believed, we know he is alive. Talk to him like he's alive. Talk of him like he's alive. Yeah. Trust him like he's alive. Yes. Because he is alive. Right. And the Bible says where two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst. How often do we think about that when, when we're in meetings? The Lord's around. The Lord's around. Yeah. <clears throat> and lastly, I want to say he knows, Peter knew, these are four things. Peter knew he was alive. Peter knew he could calm the storm. Get my third point. 
Peter knew he's still alive and he knows the unbelieving world will perish. He knows the unbelieving world will perish. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 through 18 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if, first, uh, if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? What shall uh, the, end of, the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Peter, that's a challenge. They're saying, hey, if judgment starts with us, what, what hope? What's their hope? Right. What's the end going to be? Yeah. It's, it's like, wow, we have something to live for. I mean, it should be an eye-opener to us. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? I mean, that's a sobering thought. We should know enough about the Lord to know judgment day is coming. It is sure and certain. The long-suffering of the Lord is salvation, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But there's coming a day when the Lord is going to fold up this life like a cloth. Yeah. And it's done. And it, it, it says, uh, let the unjust be just, and I'm paraphrasing, but the, 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 you know, let they that are just be just, and they that are unjust be un, unjust still. Yeah. I mean, it's over. No more decision making. Right. Thank God for his long thank, thank God he waited for me. It seems like, I mean, I've been saved for third, over 30, 33 years or something like that now. And, and uh, I, 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 I used to think God was going to come back. Many of us did, like in the first five years of my salvation. And, and even 33 years, I think, thank God for waiting that long. Yeah. Because I could have ended up in a place of eternal torment. Yeah. See, God's not in a big hurry because he knows the end. I'm in a hurry because I want it to get, we want it to be over with. We don't want to face all these trials and tribulations and, you know, if the truth be known, none of us really want to go through that. But God's not really in a big hurry when it comes to those. Because God doesn't want to see people, God doesn't, it takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, the Bible says. Right. God, we think he, God doesn't take pleasure in that stuff. God knows where their eternity is. Yes. And that bothers him. But he is a just God. And he did give his son. And they are rejecting him. And he did lay out truths. And they are rejecting the truths. He did say how a country should run. Righteousness exalted the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. So when you, when you just uh, look at things that God says and you decide, ah, 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 I don't care about any of that stuff. God has no choice but to turn you over yeah. and say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Yeah. I never do. I keep talking to this mic like it's on. My mic's down here. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> right, he has no choice at that yeah. point. But he does not enjoy that. He does not take pleasure in that. Hebrews 9.27 says, It's appointed unto men who wants to die, but after this is judgment. I remember that was one of the verses... After I got saved, I used to quote all the time around my family. There's a point on the man who wants to die. They don't think they're going to get judged. They wants to die, but after this, the judgment. There's a judgment. Stop, you know, you can't live like this all your life and expect to get away with it. And, you know, they don't want to hear it. But that's the truth. I, I don't care what they say about me. <laughs> you know, the reality of it is, is it's, I'd rather be embarrassed than be able to tell you the truth then get to the judgment seat, and then you, you know, could say, oh, well, how come you didn't explain that to me? And sometimes I still have a hard time. 2 Peter 3, 10 through 12, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also shall, uh, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then, all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye to be? in all holy conversation and godliness. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, yea, and all that live godly shall per suffer persecution. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. How come we don't talk about godliness? Yeah. How come we don't search that out and ask God, what is godliness? What does godliness look like in my life? Right. It ought to look like something. You know, I had a preacher friend, we've been to his years for or his meeting for years 
And uh, uh, he said he likes to have our family come every year. And this isn't, please, it's not padding ourselves on the back. He's like, because it's a good picture. Right. He said, you know what the devil's trying to do today? He's trying to destroy all the pictures. Yeah. Because if the world can't see what any kind of godliness, any kind of right living, any kind of truth is, then they're, they're more blinded, more confused. Right. Yes. Right, are you going to tell me godliness is going out and burning cities and tearing down, painting? When I got saved, I was taught a Christian ought to keep the law. Yeah. <laughs> ought to do right. Yeah. Ought to not steal. Ought to, you know. And now, this generation is learning that it's okay to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember a, a, a story when we were in New York City. We helped start two churches in New York City. And the pastor said he was counseling uh, this uh, mom and, and, and her son because he had gotten in trouble at school because he stole some sneakers out of the locker of another student. And so the pastor was sitting down with the mom and this boy trying to talk to him. And he says, he acted like he did nothing wrong. And he said to the pastor, he says, but I needed those sneakers. It's like, the pastor comes to me and tells me this, brother, it was like, there's no sin. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. I just needed those sneakers. Yep. Sorry. I do. <laughs> That's, you know, it says to us not to despise the thief when he steals. Okay, don't despise him. But it's wrong. Right. That's the world we're living in. These people don't know right from wrong. They don't care. Right. Why? Because we're not making the right things important. Yep. We're going away from the truth in our country. We're going away from the truth in our lives. Second Peter chapter 3, and I'm almost done here, verses 10 to 12, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, into which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that, therein shall, uh, that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in most holy uh, conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You think there's a reason why Peter keeps mentioning heat and fire? And You know, I mean, it's coming. It's all going to melt. It's all going to be over. Lastly, John chapter 8, verse 21, Then said Jesus unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. He's talking about those who do not believe on him. A lot of those Pharisees and Sadducees that just continue to question him because they wanted to hold the authority and everything that was going on in the world and in the government and all that. And he said, you'll die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Why? Because they believe not in Christ. Christ. Simply put, they don't believe Him. Yeah. They don't believe Him. God forbid that we should be a Christian that doesn't believe our God. Yes. We can go in because we have believed the Gospel. But there's a lot of other things to believe in this life. We have a, we have a journey. It's a journey. It's not a sprint. It's a journey with the Lord. So my question tonight, or this morning, is will you also go away? There's four reasons why Peter didn't go away. Yes. They're all right there. He knew some things. Right. He knew some things about our Lord. Do you know those same things this morning? If you don't, we need to. We need to get them down in our hearts so we don't ever go away. Right. Regardless. Yeah, it's going to get hard sometimes. Like, well, you don't know what I've been through. It doesn't really matter what you've been through. You can't quit on God. Because right. He does know what you're going through. Yeah. In all points. Tempted. God, do we believe God can't lie? Right. He said God cannot lie. The Bible says God cannot lie. Right. He said He was in all points tempted like as we are. Yeah, yeah without sin. Right. Oh. He has the answer. Yeah. Don't leave Him. So that's the worst thing you can do. Worst thing you can do. Amen. Let's all stand if you